All right, guys, welcome. We are here with Kelly. Uh, Kelly is from Canada. <laughs> <laughs> she was able to make it to the United States because of her love of brunch, which is a very American thing. So uh, welcome. Thank you. Um, the reason that we're talking to Kelly today, other than the fact that she's a dope person and an amazing person, is that Kelly has had a quite the transformation. Um, you've lost how much now? 70? 70 pounds. 70 pounds. Um, and I'm going to ask you, this, uh, this, is, this has been a very... I've been asking this question in this way, and I think it's very helpful because when somebody thinks, oh, I lost 70 pounds or 50 pounds or whatever amount of weight, mm -hmm. people think it's going to be hard, it's going to be stressful, I don't know if I can do this, uh, it's definitely not going to be enjoyable. So the way that I ask it is, um, how on a scale of 1 to 10, mm -hmm. how much... How enjoyable has it been? 10 is like you're at Disneyland. One is like you're at the dentist getting your teeth pulled. I'd say eight or nine. Eight or nine. Yeah. And on a scale of uh, difficulty, where would you rate it? So like how hard has it been? So like 10 is you're trying to do uh, calculus, quadratic equations mm -hmm. um and you've never taken math <laughs> and uh one is like you know it's easier than going to uh, uh like brushing your teeth brushing your teeth well that's hard for some people but <laughs> one one let's say this one is ordering some popcorn uh okay. which you enjoy so like yes. that's easy um, I would say a three to four. It depends on the situation. Yeah. yeah. I like that. So, I, like, similar to what Aubrey said, it was like, how enjoyable has it been? Eight or nine? Mm -hmm. And then how difficult has it been? Uh, three or four. And, like, I'll take that all day. Because mm -hmm. um, usually what people do is that it's like, if I ask that question, they'll be like, if they really think about it, how enjoyable has it been? It would be like, a one this sucks and then how difficult has it been a 10 right so we got the right balance um welcome thank you uh so my my first question for you is um what was kind of your life um before you came here last year i started a year and a half september 8th was my first day in the door. So just over a year ago. So, congratulations on your first hippoversary. Thank you. <laughs> um, what was life like prior to that? Because now you've lost over seventy pounds in about a year's time. Correct. Um, it was pretty much the same as it was, um, but I was going through some changes with my body where I was just tired all the time. And I needed to find a solution to give myself some energy. So it was, it, I'm a workaholic, so I work all the time. For me, I'm always trying to get up the corporate ladder and give my all in that. And I was never applying that to my physical well being. What? How come? Time, honestly. Like, I'm a mom and I have a family and getting that balance I would make excuses um, but the reality is I work 8, 9, 10, 12 hours a day and I have a 9 year old and I have a husband and I have to get sleep in there somewhere and, and you have a house and a ho it's a difficult balance but at some point you do have to make time for yourself and for your future so everything I've done is investing in my future. So that's that's the typical, one of the typical responses uh, for, you know, why somebody can't make that change um, is I don't have time. Correct. I got work. I got family. 
and all of these things. And so one thing I always like to ask is, uh, or you know, whatever, whatever your thoughts, if you ever thought about this prior um, and what you think about it now is like, well, none of those things, like if you say those things are your priority and you recognize like how you physically feel and what you're physically able to do mm -hmm. affect those things, and your health just continues to go down and you have less and less energy like are you really like bringing your best to those areas Correct. um did you ever think about that before and then what how do you feel about that now i don't think so because i think i think as human beings we tend to be able to compartmentalize our lives and put things on the back burner that aren't important so Rationalize. not right rationalize and not think about the cause and effect of things it's we're in the moment trying to get through the day and that day's done and the next day you're trying to get through that day and that's kind of how we work as a species so it's nice when you can step back have a bird's eye view of how every single thing you do affects the other thing yeah and that goes into all aspects of life and so you weren't, you were, were not able to do that no. prior. You were just kind of, you were just living in all I, of that stuff. Correct. I was in it, and I was waiting for the next like four day weekend or vacation, and you're just going through the motions to get done what you need to do to get ahead in that moment. So then, what kind of? Okay, so like you wanted to get more energy, like. Whoa, Take me through, like, what was the moments or m moment where you were like, I, I, okay, I'm feeling low energy, I need to do something, and you started to look for an answer. So yeah. what kind of, what happened or what so were those moments? There were several weekends, well, probably three or four weekends in a row where I would go to bed at night on Friday and I didn't wake up or get out of bed until 10 or 11 in the morning the following day and i would do that friday night and then saturday night as well and it wasn't because i was out partying or anything i was just so tired my body needed to do that yeah. and i'm up at between 5 and 5 30 every morning for work and it just by nature i am a night owl so i wouldn't go to bed until 10 o'clock or 11 so I'm not getting the sleep I need I was exhausted all the time yeah. um, so it just got to the point where I didn't want to do things and that's not how I want to live my life because not waiting for that one weekend or that one week to go it all out I wanted to be able to have energy to sustain the entire yeah. week and and have that be um, more even equanimity <laughs> <laughs> um, so, and also with my daughter, like I, I needed to have energy for her and I would go through the motions and I would do all the things with her. I would take her to gymnastics and go see her perform and do everything. But I was, there were times when I just wanted that to be the last thing I, I wanted yeah. to do. And, um, that's not fair to anybody. Yeah. So I figured with everything in my life. The, the main thing that could be holding me back was my weight and I went through a series of a couple of months where I tried um, tracking my calories and nothing really happened for a month I tracked it beginning to end I weighed in beginning and end and I didn't lose any weight so I said okay well I'll try intermittent fasting intermittent fasting I did for a full month I ended up gaining weight and I said, well, what's wrong with me? And I figured between the lethargy that I had, the um, everything that was going on, something wasn't right. So I did get go get tested for my thyroid. It turns out I was, I did have hypothyroidism and I had Hashimoto's disease. And so there's some hormonal imbalances there. But that's only part of the story. So I was able to get medication for that to help with the hormone issue. And that coincided with the time when I started working out at San Jose Barbell. What made you want to work out and what made you come here? Because 
I think I've never been anti-workout. Yeah. Um, but I am somebody who drives a fine balance between wanting to be by myself. Yeah. But also finding a community. Yeah. So I, when we come here, it is such a wonderful little family that you feel that you can be yourself. Yeah. And there's everybody has the best interests in mind but going back to your question it's i i was never not wanting to work out that yeah. never bothered me and to me the most fun things look like the ropes and people flip tires and do yeah. stuff like that that looks like fun yeah but not knowing anything where where do you do that right so you were just kind of like you you kind of had idea that okay well working out will help i'll do what the doctor yeah. says and you know maybe it'll it, or it will i will find an answer yeah. and i'll feel better i knew working out would help i that hands down and it was finding the community where i could be sustainable with my workouts um were you had you always been overweight yes since since forever I remember um, well my dad passed away when I was little and I remember sitting under his casket with Twizzlers like eating like I remember those moments yeah. um, and I even going into the sixth grade I was like 200 pounds and all the kids would go on a skiing trip and I'd be so embarrassed because I had to step on the scale yeah. to weigh in and and be weighed for your skis it was the most mortifying thing yeah. Um, it never, it never affected me socially though. Yeah. And I think that's maybe how I justify things because I always like had boyfriends. I yeah. always was like, had lots of friends and lots of community. Yeah, you're, as far as, sorry to interrupt, but yeah. I want to like emphasize this, um, like from the day that I met you and Ari, like you guys were super fun. I was like, these are my people. Like, like. One of the reasons that I talk with everybody, hold on one second. <laughs> we get that at our house. It's like as soon as as soon as we want to record, everybody wants to come out. Nobody there's it's been super quiet all morning, but <laughs> You hear those um, trucks out there, dude. <laughs> um, but what I was saying was, like, you guys are, you you were super, like, positive and, like, you know, you had great energy as far as, like, you know, communicate, our communication. And so, like, yeah, like, you're the same person as far as all of that. Like, there wasn't anything, like, you know, because people kind of have this thing of, like, you only need to improve if you're like super depressed or like right. you're you don't have any kind of confidence like you can't talk to people like and, and that was not the case no because none of this makes you happy you are either happy or you're not and you need to figure out what's making it not but it has nothing to do in reality if you if I got in an accident and I lost an arm, yeah, that would fucking suck, but that's not going to make me an unhappy person. Yeah. It's not going to change who I am. And I think that's part of it. That's part of why I've been able to be successful because I do come in and I, you guys ask me to do stuff and I give you that, are you sure I? But I try it yeah. and I do it. And even if I am not perfect, we're still working and progressing. Yeah. And that's, that's kind of the thing of like, uh, I always, things that I've noticed and I say this all the time, it's like there's a lot, I know a lot of people who have six packs and who are miserable. Right. You know, I know a lot of people, that was myself as well. Like I thought that's what it, and th this is the important distinction is like, it doesn't matter like which area of the spectrum you are. Cause like I was super like opposite on that uh, scale of like super quiet like very self-conscious uh, like 
I did not, you know, it was like a big deal to me and like it affected me yeah. in a lot of things. And so that's what drove me to like, okay, I, I, I want to change that. And then I achieved all these things and I was still the same person. Right. And, but I didn't know, like I couldn't, when you're inside of those things, you can't understand. Yeah. You, right? you just feel like, man, I still feel shitty. So that's important too. Like it doesn't matter where you are, as long as you have the desire to feel good and you don't need the six pack or anything else to feel good right. you can feel good right now and that's why one of my favorite things is like you can't have a happy ending to an unhappy journey like you're whatever you decide to do it you can you not only can you feel good right now right. but you have to feel good right now right like there's no <laughs> you're not gonna <laughs> magically feel good right you're not gonna wake up on day 372 and just suddenly feel great yeah. right it has to be you have to be um, happy with the day. You have to be able to yeah. wake up, look in the mirror, and be, this is what it is, and it is perfect because I'm breathing, and life is wonderful, yep. and let's kick ass today and and go for it. Yeah. You, you have to have that mentality. <laughs> it's, it's really interesting because, you know, the evolution of kind of my, because I've worked with thousands and thousands of people. I've talked to, I don't know, like, thousands and thousands of people mm -hmm. like I've seen conversations uh, like I've I've seen people who were able to succeed and I've seen people who maybe had short-term success lost a lot and then just went back like it's really really interesting what what the evolution has been is like oh, okay your thoughts like what you're thinking determines your reality mm -hmm. but then the deeper level to that now that I'm seeing it is like what you're feeling and who you're being now is going to determine what your reality is. It's like, I, you know, if I'm always complaining or miserable or unhappy on my way to my goals, whether it's, oh, I'm going to make, you know, X amount of money mm -hmm. or I'm going to be really lean and blah, blah, blah. If I'm miserable on the way to that, when I arrive there, I'm still going to be miserable. And some people think that that's just the way it is, and so they live miserable lives. Other people, they get there and they're like, man, this sucks, and it's su it's been sucky the whole time, and so they go back. Yeah. And like, they can't sustain it. Right. Um, so what, what was kind of like the things that you noticed that were really important in, in being in having it be enjoyable and what kind of stuff did you learn that you weren't expecting? Um, for me, the community made it enjoyable because when we come in here, everybody has each other's back. And you, and I can't praise it enough, you guys have built such a great little foundation here for success. Um, we get PRs and people ring the bell and everybody cheers. When somebody does a huge deadlift, everybody stops in their tracks and watches and is just hoping for the best for whoever is attempting this this thing, this feat. And it is such a, a wonderful atmosphere that we all just genuinely want each other to succeed. Um, it's fun. We're always laughing. We're always giggling and, and just joking around. Lots of high fives, lots of last set best set just yeah. making like <laughs> the best little things that are are important in building that community yeah. and that family yeah you, you know I, what i really like uh also is like you know because everybody will kind of like say oh you know we have a great community now, this is me being boastful about our community <laughs> uh but what happens here is like whether there's two people because mm -hmm. it's one thing like oh there's like 50 people or you know 30 40 people and it's like oh everybody but if it's just you me and Josh and then you just had a PR like the same thing happens right. right like when you ring the bell whether there's one person or mm -hmm. you know 20 people right um, which you know I, I think a, a lot of like that just and, and it and it goes to like the people that are here and like that's that's those are the people that are here and 
you know, so that says a lot about you. Um, what other stuff did you find as far as like nutrition and like things that were very helpful that you didn't know about as far as training or things like that? Um, that's, that's good. <laughs> so when I was growing up, of course, you're an overweight kid and you're put on a diet at an early age. It is... Which is not good. Do not put kids do on not, diets. Do just not. Don't. Don't They'll, put anybody on diets. Right. There's a there's a right way to do. Well, there's a the mentality was completely different in the 90s and even the early 2000s. It was super restrictive. 1200, 1300 calories. It was working out until you threw up. It was you are not good enough unless you see that scale move every time. Um, but. I think that with the last, particularly the last two to three years, there's been an abundance of people coming up saying, this is normal, this is sustainable in the figuring out your metabolic rate, figuring out what your caloric needs are, and that may take a month or two or three, and then going just a little bit under that and yeah. see what happens after a month or two. and then adjust yourself from there is being more aware of your body and the daily weigh-ins are amazing because then you see not just the trend but you see hey i had some salt last night so what it's happens? gonna go up three pounds tomorrow and i know that for a fact and it doesn't affect me mentally um it's just all calculations and data points yeah. which is fantastic um to be able to take away the emotion from the scale is one of the best things yeah. and have that balance and be able to not restrict yourself in what a diet is in the did you typical sense did you of used word. to restrict did you try restricting things in the past i've tried i've tried every diet what was one of the favorite th what was like what was like one of the most ridiculous things that you tried that you were like okay maybe this is the key Anything with no carbs. You yeah. lost, like I lost a ton of weight and you know what? It's not healthy, it's not sustainable. Most of it's water. It and will, and it's, it sucks. It sucks, because everything <laughs> delicious has carbs in it. <laughs> it's just silly. Yeah. Um, I was talking with my friend on the phone last night and she was saying, um, because she lives in Minnesota and she was saying, oh, I'm seeing you from here and you're looking great, you're doing great. I said, but I feel great. That's the most important thing. And then she said, well, uh, well, how's your diet? Are you allowed to have in and out I'm like, motherfucker, I'll have in and out all day if I want. If your like, diet <laughs> restricts you from having in and out right. you need to immediately stop right. and go to in and out It's like, and for me, like, I love beer. So I, like, the Bacon and Beer Festival is it's my Christmas. It is the <laughs> best day of the year. I freak out and love it. And I... Just make sure that you have a bank account of calories and you figure out how to stay within it. You're not going to put everything on credit, right? You need to, you need to stay within those calories yeah. and you're good. Where is the Bacon and Beer Festival? Dude, it is. <laughs> <laughs> um, it started at the San Jose Giants Stadium, that little one off okay. of 10. Alma. Yeah. And then they moved it to Levi's. They had it there oh, so they for upgraded. three years, which was great because you could be on the 50 yard line in the middle of the line, like eating donuts and drinking beer. Like, they actually know. let you on the field? Yes. Or that's where it is? Yes, it was amazing. Last they year- They were super sensitive. They're super like, p like very, very touchy about the field. We shot a commercial in Levi's. And they're touchy about the field. And like, yeah, they were like, don't go uh, on the fucking field. Like, like so, yeah. <laughs> your no, we were out there spilling beer. It was crazy. Interesting. But they moved it to Avaya last year, okay. and you were not allowed on the field there. Interesting. Yeah, they're very particular at Avaya. So um, it was all around the concourse, and then they've got that, that giant bar. Yeah. Um, which I don't know if it still is, but it used to be the longest bar in North America. So it's just a huge-ass bar. Interesting. Um, and then they brought in food trucks and That's stuff, dope. which was fun. But it's the best, and I drink a lot of beer. So before <laughs> – so, like – so that's that's another thing. Like, somebody will be like, oh, well, I just like food too much. I like so beer I. too much. And so that's why I can't lose weight. It's like, no, you just don't want to – no. It, we we set up these arbitrary 
rules in different compartments of our lives in which if you looked at it as a whole like it doesn't make sense right like uh well here here's one thing i learned too is if you have a pint of ice cream let's say and you love ice cream so you weigh out your portion of ice cream you are not going to be any more satisfied eating that portion or eating the full pint it's the same satisfaction level so it's about having your ice cream but just making sure you have the right portions to it um and that's kind of what i've done with everything so i don't eliminate things i just make sure that they're within the sizes that i can control and we weigh everything and we measure things and it that's how it turns out after doing that for 365 days it's it makes a difference yeah, yeah after what, doing it for a month, month it makes what, a difference what uh what calorie level are you at I run between 16 and 18, it okay. depends. But if I'm not hungry, I'll have 13. Yeah. If I'm very hungry, I'm gonna eat 21, Yeah. right? So that's that's really important too, because a lot of people think that, oh, okay, calorie deficit, that means I gotta eat a thousand calories. Well, this is something I always like to highlight. It's like a calorie deficit means you are eating less calories than what you used to. Okay. So you're starting from the actual number that you don't go from zero to 1200 and set an arbitrary number right you know a pound of fat is made up of 3500 calories and that's huge and so <laughs> if a person was eating 3000 calories a day on average which is why tracking is so good you know because you actually find out you drop your calories to even uh, let's say let's say 2,500 mm -hmm. every seven days. So that's a deficit of 500. Every seven days, you're gonna lose a pound. Right. Like right. that's just that's the math of it. Right. And so that's also why you know tracking things is so important because otherwise you don't know. Like you're in the dark. You know. Right. And I have um, so many friends who will have a weekend, and it's hard not to force my thoughts into what they're Other saying people, yeah. it's very hard so i sit back and usually listen and nod and smile and and when they have tell me yeah have equanimity when they're telling me oh i had carbs last night so i gained four pounds and in my head the only way to gain a pound is to have 3500 calories above your daily caloric expenditure so you are burning a certain amount of base, you'd have to eat 35 above that just to gain one pound. So unless you ate like 12,000 calories yesterday, which I'm pretty sure you didn't, because I don't- That's very difficult. <laughs> That's why we did the we did the 10,000 calorie challenge. You remember that? Uh, I saw you guys yeah. and uh, what an attempt. <laughs> yeah, like most most of us tapped out at like around five or six. Right. Like it's a lot of calories. It's way too much. Yeah. And I've, I've never, been huge on like I've never gone and at ate four Big Macs at one sitting. That's not what I do. I'm a waste at a buffet. Yeah. I always have been, but <laughs> I tend to eat more calorically dense foods. Yeah. And so incorporating other things in with my diet, but still being able to enjoy those and portioning those out to yeah. like the reality of a portion of a what you did with the rice at Chipotle. Yeah. You buy a portion and assume that it's right, but until you measure it out, you, you don't know. You don't know. Yeah. And when you actually do weigh it out, a portion is not a, a true portion. Yeah. Do do you like do you feel like you were you kinda had this information before and it was just that you hadn't implemented it for some reason or like was there something that was missing in your understanding or was it like a lot of this was just new information presented in a you know much simpler way or a different way that's a really good question um i feel like i did have the majority of the information but i feel like also in my head although it wasn't logical if i didn't lose five pounds a week then i was a failure yeah so that is in itself is setting yourself up for failure because yeah. you watch the biggest loser and they yeah. lose 50 pounds in six weeks and you think that that's how it has to be or yeah. you lose five pounds your first week and you think it always has to be like that and then you see it go up a pound the next week and, and you're like oh, my oh shit, yeah fuck it all like just flip the table right, right? <laughs> but um, 
being able to have the consistency and knowing, learning, like you always say, trust the process, like uh, trusting that what I do consistently over time will get me in the yeah. path that I need to be in. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's really interesting because even myself, and this is why I'm like, you know, I, I think this is important before I go into the point. This is a side note. Because what I'm always thinking about is I'm always thinking about, okay, well, I, I now today in 2019, I know literally exactly what somebody needs to do mm-hmm. to lose X amount of pounds, the science, the blah, blah, blah. Like I know everything. But what I'm always thinking about is, okay, here's Kelly. How, what does Kelly need to hear or understand about this so that then she can easily take action on it? So like, you know, it's, uh, I, I think a lot of people make things very complicated mm-hmm. um, and they make it more complex than they need to. So everybody kind of knows about calories. Um, you know, to a degree, some people, they may not believe it, whatever, but it's like a piece of information such as a pound of fat requires, like, so calories are not something that was made up by somebody with a special <laughs> interest. Like calories are physics. Like this is like, you can't, you, you, there's not going to be a scientist on the planet who will argue that, you know, a calorie, one gram of fat is equal to, is contains nine calories of energy. Yeah. Like that's, that would be like arguing, does gravity exist? Like, right. you don't need to believe in gravity for it to be working. Like, you don't need to believe that a calorie, ha- you know, is a unit of energy. Like, it's still going to work, right. right? So a piece of information like 3,500 calories is what is needed to either create or get rid of a pound of fat was something to me that I was like, okay, like this seems to make sense to people. Was there, was there particular pieces of information or connections that like were very like eye opening for you? Um, that was one of them. The other thing was, um, and you see this so much where people look at their Fitbit, look at whatever and look at their calories spent and they think they can add that to the bank. Yeah. And that's not how it works because this is all just estimating on your yeah. everything. It's estimating your entire body yeah. and taking that out of the equation. Um, so that was a huge thing to say, I don't have an extra 463 not, not to calories. Add back in. Right. Yeah. right. And you stick between your 16 and eight, whatever your yeah. daily calories are and um, then let science do the rest. Yeah. And, you know, once this is like tracking is so important because Mm -hmm. it gives you insight, like you begin to see things that everybody else will not see. For example, 1800 calories is actually a lot of food. 2000 calories is actually a lot of food. Mm -hmm. Um, And I'd love to hear your thought on this. Uh, And you won't ever know that until you start tracking things. Right. we should say it's a lot of the the better food for you in the long run. Yeah, well, you can do eighteen hundred calories at McDonald's oh and like. I mean, a you'll meal lose weight. Yeah, you will, but I, I'll be hungry, be hungry in six hours, right? Yeah, and, I, or in like twenty <laughs> minutes. <laughs> uh, that was always one. Uh, I would do these, you know, seminars, and that was always the example I gave of like. You know, because jerf is an important part yes. of the equation. You don't have to jerf, but it's probably that in your best so interest. That sounds so rude. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if people don't know what that is. That, so jerf is... Uh, thank you, Kelly. Uh, jerf means just eat real food. Yeah. And the reason for that is... Uh, do you remember the two reasons? Well, you, then you have control over yeah. the portions. Yeah, so you know exactly how much you're eating. So that's actually a good third reason. But the two things are like real food tends to have lower calories yeah, and it's more filling and it has vitamins and minerals. So like this is just a chemical equation here. Mm-hmm. And if you put the wrong, not I don't want to say wrong, but if you're not getting the chemicals that you need mm-hmm. uh, for certain processes to work, 
then those things aren't going to work as well. That doesn't make you bad. That doesn't make anything wrong. It's just like, that's just what it is. Yeah. And so that's what jerf is. Um, but I always use this example of like, if you, uh, the example for calories that I always use was like, a, uh, I would ask like, does anybody know what a pound of chicken breast comes out to in calories? And nobody would ever know. And uh, a pound of chicken breast is uh, 25 grams, so about 400 calories. Okay. So 400 calories of chicken breast, uh, a pound is like, it's a lot of chicken. It's like this <laughs> much chicken breast. Yeah. And you're not gonna be able to eat all that. Like, I eat a lot, and that's difficult for me to eat. And so you're gonna be full, and you only ate less than 400 calories. One McDonald's hamburger is about that <laughs> thick. Very tiny. It may be like that big um and that's 250 calories mm -hmm. and you're not gonna be you're not gonna you're not full after one of those right you gotta have at least two or three or get a fry on the side and you gotta get some <laughs> fries and i don't know anybody i always used to say this like they have small medium large I'm like i don't know anybody who ever ordered just small fry like well i did doesn't make it well maybe <laughs> now or no just always oh you I would, always i would get like the kids happy meal oh the yeah. one. there you go because i so... told you i'm a waste at a buffet but, <laughs> but still that like kids happy meal is what do you think four five six like 700 calories right there and for children yeah <laughs> yeah so it, it's you you don't know this until you track things and so then you know I, this is what I was gonna say is like I would love to hear your thoughts on this you know and if they've changed over time it's like um, uh, your the th the 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 thing that people do is they set up restrictions and and like cut out entire food groups mm -hmm. as good or bad which ultimately leads to binging or giving up or just being like damn like well i don't want to cut out french fries so i guess i'm just not going to lose weight ever right. versus when you understand calories and now no food is good or bad mm -hmm. it's it's fucking food right it has which food is, is meant to be enjoyed which is meant to be enjoyed <laughs> right? every like think about why do you want to do or have or be anything is because you think you're gonna feel good in the doing, having, or being of it. Correct. So, um, you're, uh, the moment that you say, uh, or you take away all of those restrictions, mm -hmm. it that thing no longer has like that pull over you of like, right. uh, hey buddy. What's up? <laughs> uh, the, one of the world's strongest human beings just walked in the yeah. building. So literally one of the world's strongest human beings. We should all just go and bow at his feet. <laughs> yeah. It, uh, but anyway, so beast. like. <laughs> <laughs> we love him. Um, that was LJ. Maybe we'll have somebody edit something in like somewhere over just here. Just superimpose his yeah. face right here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I keep forgetting this is on. It's all oh, good. I'm no, that's good. That's good. Out. That's what you want. Okay. That means we're doing good. Okay. Um, but. The moment you take away those restrictions, all of a sudden you you notice like these feeling these things kind of dissolve, mm -hmm. and then you don't you don't like you were talking about the ice cream. You no longer need to eat the whole pint, right? Because you're covering up some or like you're just so distressed in all kinds of emotional ways that you just keep eating, and it's like, well, once I realize there's it's not the the ice cream is not bad, mm -hmm. then I'm like, oh, like. I, I can now notice the feeling of, oh, I'm full after 200 calories of ice cream. Yeah. You know, or whatever it is. Well, it's, it's the same as with the scale. It's taking away the emotion from it. So that, that always, always has bothered me when I'm around people, particularly women, <laughs> who say, oh, I can't eat that. That's bad. I can't have another cookie. Or I'm so bad. I just had a cookie. And you look at them, you're like, bitch, please. Like, this is food. It's giving you energy, appreciate what you have. You can have it or not have it, whether whether you do or not is not a good thing or a bad thing, yeah. it's just a decision. And 
it's it's always bothered me when people have put um, emotion toward a judgment, a, a, something like that, right? Um, so to be able to see more people enjoy more varieties of food and have more people informed that it is all calories, fat, carb, protein, right? That's that's what it is. And Wait, did you ever have those? Uh, did you like? Did you notice that change, or did you always kind of were like, "Well, I'm just missing something. I don't know." No, I used to have quite an emotional reaction yeah. to food, okay. and it was never a good food, bad food per se, but it was what I was always told was bad, yeah. and what I was always told was so good. So, how how did you used to feel when you used to eat bacon or drink beer? Or did you just I, not care? Yeah, I didn't care. I didn't. I I was enjoying the moment and you, so you the know process. the the thing that I noticed. So like I have so like we have so many people that we've seen go through the process. You begin to learn patterns yeah. and you begin to see patterns. And so one thing that I've noticed amongst the people who have had the most success whether they had a lot of weight to lose or very little weight to lose and like they wanted to look better, whatever it is, mm -hmm. the people with the most who were already the, like they had a very, whether they knew it or not, if it was subconscious or conscious, they, they had this, their, their like overarching thing, uh, principle or idea was like self-love and enjoyment. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, or at least they wanted to go in that direction. Those were the people who have the most success. Mm -hmm. So the reason I bring that up is because like, that's where you have to start. So these people who are so judgmental against themselves mm -hmm. and they constantly beat themselves up. And there's not really much love for themselves. They don't. They don't make it. Like I've seen it over and over again. The people who need the most help, they don't make it. And they don't fucking. Make it's it. hard. I know so many people who are in that position, and I don't know of a way to have them think otherwise. Um, like there's somebody I've known my entire life, and. Her and I grew up in the same situation, and I am who I am, and she is who she is, and she comes from such a self-loathing place yeah. where it's, and I don't know, that must be way beyond any of these conversations. Has, she needs therapy, obviously. There's, there's other issues, but I don't know how to make that switch well, turn for people. You know, that's really interesting. So one of the ways, and like more and more, like if anybody looks at Al J's or mine's or Josh or John, like any of our information that we're sharing or things that we're talking about, mm -hmm. yeah, like we're really good at nutrition. Like we're the fucking best. Like we're really good at being really strong. Like all of our people are really regular sized human beings and like fucking Al Jay's 155 pounds and deadlift 600 for reps. Like 622. 622 and like, uh, yeah, we're really good at all the technical shit, but none of that really matters because what we're talking about mostly is loving yourself and forgiving yourself for what you have or haven't done and so i think because you know what i, I mean i'll just be honest like i came from that same place yeah like i had this deep down thing of like well everything's eventually like going to be i believe that everything would be good and okay but for the majority of my life i fucking like my self-talk and like what i thought about myself and the words and language that i used in my own head mm -hmm. was not a good, it, it wasn't good. And so what I've kind of recognized is, and I tried to, so for one, like these conversations help because the more people talk about this kind of stuff, yeah. the, the more 
it becomes a reality, right? Correct. I remember like if I were to talk about this in high school or even college, forget it. Yeah, yeah. I, everyone would make fun of me, and I would think, and I remember, I would, I would never talk about any of this stuff because that means I'm a little bitch or like people would make fun of me or they're gonna say something about me. So that thing is really cool. So I think it is changing, mm -hmm. but people add complexity to this in that, oh, I need to figure all this shit out. Where did this come from? How am I gonna overcome it? Yeah. How can I change my thinking about myself? And so one of the things that we've really, really focused on and worked on in figuring out, and this is the answer is like, you can choose to love yourself right now. Literally, this is as complicated as it is. You could sit down and say, there's a variety of ways, but like very simple one is like, I love myself and I forgive myself. And just sit with that and repeat that self. And I forgive myself for everything I have and haven't done. And so you begin to take away these self judgments and so they begin to dissolve the same way your thoughts about bad food dissolve. Yeah. And they don't have any more power. Like ice cream doesn't have any more power over you anymore or whatever the food is. And so these judgments, they're not something to like surgically remove out of your body. Mm -hmm. Like they're bad. That's a, a part of you. And so you, you bring it back and you, you embrace it with love and it dissolves. And what we recognize, all that there ever was and all that there ever is and will be, is good. Like, yeah. it's <laughs> huge. you know what I mean? Yeah. And so it's, it's really awesome that more people are talking about it. A lot of more people are living it. Yeah. And so I think that's the way that this changes. Because if I go to that person and I tell her, look, you got to be positive because this was a phase too. Right. in myself and I still see it a lot it's like don't think negative don't talk negative that only gives it more power and makes it a bigger thing because the moment you're gonna have that thought right the moment you do you're gonna be like oh fuck like I'm thinking this negative shit fuck fuck man I'm Which such a piece of down shit even more right that's so man like that's the kind of shit I'm like that that's the real key mm -hmm. because then you are instantly in this moment you become whole and you become good, and then the things that you have to do become effortless, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Um, so anyways, I, that was just something that popped in my head because you're saying like, because we all want to like uplift other people. We want to yeah. share like, how, how, do you, how amazing do you feel now? Like you want to share that with people. Correct. Right? Correct. And like, the Canadian in me wants to stay back and be polite and not say much, but the just the person in me wants to. Yeah, you want to share it with everybody. From the rooftops, right? And I also know that I'm in the middle of a journey here. And I'm not at that limitless point that I've talked about yet. So I'm. Do you want to like just quickly describe that for because a lot of people may not know what that what you're referring to as far as that limitless point. Um, I I said whenever anyone asks me why I want to lose weight, what my goal weight is, et cetera, et cetera, um, I always say that I don't have a goal weight. I never have because I it's not it's not about fitting into a size six clothes or any of that. It's all bullshit, and I believe everybody is beautiful like that so it's never been about that but for me my myself i want to live in a place where my body doesn't stop me from living my best life so if somebody calls me and wants to go zip lining i can say yep i'll do, do it. it yep if somebody calls and says hey i've got tickets to this thing i'm like yep on it and i don't have to think twice about it even looking when you brought out these chairs, like 70 pound higher me would have looked at these chairs and been like, oh, is that yeah. something that, and it's something that no, I don't think about anymore. Yeah. I looked at it, I was like, oh, those are cute chairs, yeah. right? <laughs> they are super cute. But I, know, <laughs> but I know that I would have stressed about that and yeah. that stress is not how you want to live your life. You're constantly so, deteriorating your life. Correct. And saying no to opportunities and and having it affect your life and your fun and your your outlook and a lot of things. 
Um, I just wanted to live completely limitless, at least as far as my body is concerned. So that's my goal weight. And it may be 160 it pounds, matter, maybe yeah. 210 pounds. I don't know what it's going to be, but when I feel that my body is not holding me back from anything, that will be my yeah. goal weight. Well, and you're already living that. And that's what kind of what it means, what I'm we're always saying is like, every like it exists right now right the moment it exists for you right now the moment it begins to change in the objective right reality like literally riding every roller coaster of great america with my daughter <laughs> was just awesome because i love coasters i've always wanted a coaster buddy <laughs> but it was getting to that point where you know what i don't know if i'm yeah. going to make these ones yeah so things have to change because I can't even have that thought it shouldn't yeah. be a thought no um, at least for me it shouldn't yeah. because we can get into a comedy accommodations for different body sizes and all that that's an endless debate but for me I did not want to be affected by um, having to wonder if the world could take my body yeah and I wanted to be able to say yes to everything yeah because um, in general, I am 99% of the time, if you call me at 2 a.m., it's like, Cal, get your butt out here. I'm like, ding, ding, ding. And I, I, I'm out there because I love <laughs> life and I love being out there and to saying yes to opportunities. I very rarely say no. Um, so if it was because of my size that I had to say no, that's yeah, that's Which what didn't make out. you feel good. Yeah. Right. Um, that's interesting. I, I really like that because, you know, I, I have people and this is why we always say this was like the intention with what we're all about to from day one. Mm -hmm. You know, when Al J and I decided to, oh, like we're going to open our own gym. Like, oh. <laughs> uh, You're so young and innocent. Yeah. <laughs> like, uh, like you never know. Like, don't judge anybody for where they are whether it's like this person has x amount of weight to lose mm -hmm. or this person is skinny and they think they need to be like this right. so for me it was always like and on top of that you never know what somebody is going through so like you know we always say like the simplest things are the the best is like if you don't have anything nice to say like don't say anything right. nice doesn't mean you just you know placate and accommodate everybody Nice sometimes means like, you know, nice always means telling the truth, right. you know. You know what? Don't be an asshole. That, don't That's be an asshole. That's my rule in life. Very simple. <laughs> um, and so like that always, you know, for, for a long time I was like, I really thought and believed I need to weigh 180 pounds right. because that's what a man is and like, and I agonized for literally a decade over like, why can't I gain weight? Why, right. blah, 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 blah. And then I would, you know, no longer be lean and I would get fat and that would, that would stress me out. Like, and so it didn't stop when I was like, until number one, I started to have more love for myself. And that allowed me to be like, like me being able to enjoy my life which I can do right now. Mm -hmm. Like I can do anything and everything I want, which was my initial goal anyway. Yeah. And the weight no longer mattered. Right. And all of a sudden, like everything felt even better. And like, you know, then more goals were actually achieved the moment that negativity was gone. Right. Right. Or more likely the negativity was embraced and then it just dissolved. Right. You know? And the um, reality is if you're putting such um, a high a high level of accomplishment on a single number uh, what what if you're 176 right does that mean you failed and you're 181 day the next day you you I don't know it's eat a little more arbitrary. and you're 182 <laughs> and then you're 174 like it, it's all arbitrary and you're that's correct. we always that's what I always say is like you're not a number like literally you're not a number literally like you're <laughs> you're a lot a human, of things you're a lot of things but you are not enough like right. if i drew a one on the wall like that's a number you're not 
that, right? And so, like, and even in, like, a physical sense, like, every single day, or not even every single day, every minute, perfect, thank you, you're drinking some water, you just went up by, you know, 20 grams, right? right? So, what? Like, you, right. we identify with, I, oh, I'm 155, like, that's who I am. Right. Like, no, like, right. your silly goose is what you are. Have you followed the I weigh movement at all? No. It's really, it's going along with what you say. There's an actress who started this movement, and basically what had happened was um, people, or like tabloids, would say, here's Kim Kardashian, she weighs 112 pounds or whatever, and it was always described as how much they weigh. So she changed that, she started this hashtag or whatever, and it started a movement, an I weigh movement, where people say, I weigh and everything else about them but their weight. Like, I am a mother, I, I weigh um, my, my career, I weigh all these different things, and it takes it away from like that. whatever that number yeah. is. And so there are millions of people who have gone in and they say, I weigh this, and it's a sheet full of stuff that things. has nothing to do with yeah. their physicality. Yeah. Um, that's dope, yeah. I like that. And so that's, that's the kind of stuff that I'm like, you know, so you were kind of talking about, well, how do you get somebody to change? Because we all want people, inherently, I think we want other people to feel good, too. Yeah, like we so. Especially, yeah, I mean, yeah. like, even when somebody is mean, like, to somebody else, what that's truly signifying is, like, they want to feel good about themselves. Yeah. And, you know, what they're saying, like, it's not, it's not what the truth is. Like, you would never, you know, if somebody's mean to you, you want them to be nice to you if you're mean to somebody deep down you don't want to be mean to somebody you know right. um but uh i really like that and like people that's why it's like the same thing with when you see it in one thing you see it in all things social media is a beautiful thing because guess what we are having this conversation which you know maybe five people see it maybe 500 people see it it doesn't matter right. because that particular person will get something right and and they'll be able to share in that good feeling absolutely right? so that's kind of i'm like that's good i like that and more and more people uh are getting that and i think we can continue to evolve in that direction by making things more simple like you don't need to go back into the past and figure out what happened Correct. because you keep the past alive in the now and how it does it manifest is going to manifest as your feelings your shitty feelings that you're going to experience by going back and thinking about that, right. that's how it's going to show up. So it's like we can just choose to love and forgive and feel good now. And it's like that's as complicated as it needs to be. And it doesn't mean that it's just going to happen like that. I mean, it can, but it'll take some practice. Mm -hmm. I literally have a decade full of journals where I can see the change like nice. in the language. You know what I mean? Um, you don't need to keep journals like I'm just saying, like it's it's interesting to see that. But it that. helps some people. Yeah, I know people who keep journals, yeah. and it's so therapeutic for them, and it's what they need to do to get their feelings yeah. out, and yeah, come to real com the comfort level because they're so stuck themselves. inside right. that they can't get away from. It, it's that just it's a funny. Uh, we'll get into our bonus questions right now. Oh, bonus <laughs> questions. But I just wanted to mention this is like because it was interesting because I this is what I'm sure you've seen all this stuff is like nowadays everybody needs to have a morning routine the morning routine you got to wake up at four o'clock in the morning <laughs> you got to do two hours of meditation you got to do a oh, cold Lord. plunge <laughs> you got to do a cold shower you got to do you know four hours of like you know <laughs> writing in the morning like it's just all you got to do blah 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 and it's like you don't need to do that yeah. like if some like just because somebody else is doing something you're like oh well i can't do that mm -hmm. now i'm a piece of shit like no Right. Whatever it is for you is correct. So, correct. well, wonderful. Let me ask you some bonus questions bonus here. Question. Okay. So the first question <laughs> is, uh, you've been given an elephant. You can't give it away or sell it. What would you do with the elephant? Oh, shit. I loved Aubrey's answer to this. <laughs> it was so good. Um, <laughs> I... I can't give it away or sell it. I would make it available for everybody to ride. I, that's all I would keep in my backyard and let all the neighborhood kids play. 
and feed it and learn from it. Maybe, maybe start what would you name him um, or her? I, I can't know. It would be him, I think. I can't get Horton out of my head. I would not <laughs> do Horton. <laughs> um, I'd probably just call him like, Maybe buggy or something. Buggy. Yeah, I, I have no idea why. All right, buggy we'll go with then. we'll go with that. <laughs> buggy. I actually thought you were saying Lord Buggy because you Lord said buggy. you said you said Lord, and I was like Lord what? <laughs> Lord Buggy Esquire the Third. I like I like that. <laughs> um, all right, if you were a tree, what kind of tree would you be, and why? I would be a Canadian maple. So. Get some syrup maple syrup. <laughs> <laughs> maple syrup is expensive. You not not for me. I not for you because that there you go. Yeah. All right, I like that. All right. Um, is a hot dog a sandwich? Why or why not? Hell no. Why not? Because the sandwich is open on all sides. Oh, and okay. Dog, it's like in like a, it's more closer to a taco than a sandwich. Okay. In my opinion. So then I'm going to play devil's advocate. Oh. Okay. Subway makes sandwiches. Okay. They use Would you agree with that? They do. Okay. So when they make their sandwich, you think it's like hoagies. They, they cut it, uh. right? And then they open it and it's still it's not open on all sides. Oh, dude. Is it still a sandwich? Well, it has sandwich meat in it. Hot dog is not meat. <laughs> All right, so uh, there, I'm just saying. So I guess my reasoning was incorrect. Although, okay. So we helped clarify it. Okay, but okay. it's not a. If you if you close your eyes and you have to think of forty five sandwiches and you you're naming them all, you, you would never, never say name hot, a hot dog. dog ever. That's that's a very good answer. <laughs> I like that. We'll take that. Uh, what's the best Wi-Fi name you've ever seen? Oh shit! <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! I know everybody's seen tons of I, like very interesting yeah, ones. Yeah, well, my husband usually does all the the tech stuff in our house, um, but it's usually something along the lines of um, Holler for the Wi-Fi password or something. Like just, that, those are funny. Yeah. So if you need to yell at someone, they get that. Yeah, you just yell it you out. You just yell it out. Yeah. But I've seen some really crude ones that have me cracking up. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, in 40 years, what will people be nostalgic for? Oh, that's a really good question. 40 years. I think, I feel like we're at a place where how we changed from books and physical things like records and CDs to digital. Now we're kind of there. I don't know how far in the digital spectrum we can get. Um, so I think that we may still be nostalgic for the old timey. DVDs and the physical stuff. Yeah, a physical book. Like my sister will only go to AAA and get a map. She will never use Google Maps. Interesting. Cause, so when we do road trips, she's like, she's bitches like, out there with this freaking thing like this, like, telling me where to go. Yeah. I'm like, is that even up to date? I'm like, <laughs> get some weights over here. <laughs> but she has to do it because that's that's her comfort and nostalgia, yeah. right? And yeah. so it's the same physical books and stuff. It's, yeah. I think that people will still want those feel that things. smell and the feel and everything else so it, i think it'll be the same thing i don't I think like we're not we're not gonna have flying cars let's be real here as much as we want them we've been saying it forever <laughs> um okay yeah i like that well even even yeah i'm like it's not the jetsons we have a uh, yeah <laughs> we have a uh, jazz nights in the jazz lounge uh and you know i've been playing music off of um, Spotify okay. and off of Alexa, I was like, man, it would be, it would, it would take jazz nights to the next level um, if I had a record yes. or records. Right. And so now I want to get a, a, what's it called? Like a record player? A record player. 
<laughs> a record player to play in jazz night yeah. in the jazz lounge. That'd be so By the fun. way, jazz lounge is the family living area outside of my room, so <laughs> <laughs> that's the jazz lounge. Um, but okay. Um, last question, best question. Best question. Um, which, what fictional character is amazing in their book or show or movie, okay. but would be insufferable if you had to deal with them in mundane, everyday situations? <laughs> so like, you know. I have Peter Griffin. Okay, Peter yep. Griffin. <laughs> <laughs> mundane everyday situations yeah it would like, drive me nuts but it's can awesome. you think of me an example um just his voice i think that <laughs> kind of thing. like it would, it would drive me nuts and he's pretty dumb and um the reality of it is if you asked him to do anything it would probably be fucked up yeah so <laughs> I would, peter griffin yeah okay that's i like it <laughs> um all right well Kelly, thank you so much. Yeah. That was awesome. I'm excited to share this with people. Um, is there anything that, any last message, best message, best message. Um, that you would like to share? Um, I think that we've heard it over and over and over again. No matter what your goal is, you just need to trust the process and have patience because patience is going to get you everywhere. Nothing is linear in life, absolutely nothing. So it's about watching and coming to acceptance with the highs and lows and knowing that day one, day 74, day 682, there's, there's a path and a trajectory and it will go how you want it to go if you follow the rules that are in place. Equanimity. Equanimity. So I like that. Uh, one of the three E's of San Jose Barwell, Barbell, um, stay, stay even keeled and have patience. Yep. Uh, SpongeBob with the hair blowing in the wind. SpongeBob <laughs> on, on, on the seahorse yep. with his hair flowing in, in the wind. <laughs> <laughs> um, which by the oh well my phone's right there but oh, uh <laughs> it's it's my background so uh but anyways uh if anybody wanted to follow continue continue following you on your journey where could they do so mm. if somebody would be interested or if they I would, I think I save my journey for my private life, Got like it. all my social media is for that, private, but I would good. recommend um, following San Jose Barbell, follow you, Ranbeer, follow I Am Deadlift, get the Josh King, like get, get the group and you'll get the overall gist of what we're about in the day-to-day -day posts. And, and I, I really like this and I thank you uh, and I really appreciate you having this conversation with me. Mm -hmm. um, it, here's, they just brought this to mind, is like when, you, when you're doing something nowadays, there's this like unspoken uh, like feeling or obligation to be like, okay, well, I just did this. I have to talk about it and like teach other people how to do it. Mm -hmm. Like you don't need to do that, especially if you don't feel like it. Like, do you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. like somebody, you know, cause you see this all the time. It's like, and it's not good or bad, but I'm like, don't feel obligated to do that. Um, it's like somebody loses 30 pounds uh, and they want to talk about like now they're a nutrition coach like right like you don't like don't feel like you got to do that right? right sometimes you can just be okay with where you are and... you can be okay with where you are <laughs> like you don't it's not necessary if you feel like it you can so that's yeah. that's uh, something interesting it's just like one um, nothing about my relationship or very little like I don't discuss it but it's funny because we were talking yesterday or we've talked about it. it's like we well, you should come on my podcast and like 
uh, she's talking to my wife. Yeah. It's like, you should come on my podcast. And she's like, what would I talk about? I was like, I don't know, whatever you are. <laughs> <laughs> um, you're like, I think you're interesting, so yeah, <laughs> maybe I mean, others will. Uh, or I, I would have uh, I would have JD interview us, so that would be <laughs> funny. Um, but cool, so thank you so much. Uh, thank you if you were watching or listening. Um, and uh, yeah, hope you have a beautiful day and Go enjoy something that is enjoyable to you. Go watch football. Go watch football. (laughs) And that is it. You didn't do your... (laughs) Oh, shit. (laughs) We'll have to edit that in. (laughs)